So this passage begins, Priamos, rex Troiae est, Hecuba regina. Now, Priamos in the sentence is the subject, which means Priam. And then the verb, the main verb is est, which means is. So Priam is rex Troiae. Now, rex, as you can see in the vocabulary, means king. And it's nominative singular, so it's going with Priam. And then Troiae, uh, you can see here Troia is Troy. And you can see after that that Troiae is the genitive. So therefore it means of Troy. So Priam is the king of Troy. Hecuba Regina. Hecuba the queen. So Priam is the king of Troy. Hecuba is the queen. Uh, or just Hecuba the queen. Then in the second sentence, Dei somnium hecubai dant. So the subject is Dei. Now a Deus is a god, and it's second declension masculine, so Dei is the nominative plural, the gods. The verb is dant, which is the third person plural in the present tense of the verb do dare, to give. So the gods give. The object is somnium, a dream. And then hecubai here is dative singular. Hecuba declines like puella, first declension feminine. So the gods give a dream to Hecuba. Then the next sentence here, in somnio, Hecuba facem parit. So in plus ablative, meaning in, in somnio, in the dream, Hecuba, she's the subject, parit is the verb, and parit means uh, gives birth to, and then the object is facem, which is the accusative form of a noun meaning a torch or a firebrand. So that's the object. In the dream, Hecuba gives birth to a torch or a firebrand. Then, postridie, Hecuba ad templum ambulat. So postridie means on the next day. Then Hecuba is the subject. The verb is ambulat, which means walks. And then ad templum, ad plus accusative, means to a temple, or towards a temple. And then in the next sentence, we have in templo, sacerdos, somnium inquit, nuntius a deis est. So in plus ablative, meaning in, in the temple, a priest, sacerdos, says, that's inquit. Um, the word inquit is very common in Latin. It means he or she says, and it often interrupts direct speech, as it does here. So you get somnium, and then inquit interrupts that speech, and then the speech resumes with nuntius. Uh, so the priest says, the dream, somnium, that's the subject, is, that's est, a message because nuntius can mean a messenger or a message, in this case probably a message, a message, ar deis, this is ar plus ablative, in this case meaning from, so this, uh, so the dream is a message from the gods. Then the next sentence is puer tuus, periculum portat, so this subject is puer tuus, your son, your boy, the verb is portat, brings, carries, and periculum means danger. So your boy brings danger. And then the next sentence, puer exitium troiae est. Uh, so the boy is, that's est, exitium, destruction or ruin, for Troy. So troiae could be the dative singular. It could also be the genitive singular. So it could mean the boy is the ruin or the destruction of Troy. So you could translate it as dative or genitive there. The next sentence is Hecuba puerum mox parit. So Hecuba mox means soon, parit means gives birth to, and puerum means a boy. So Hecuba soon gives birth to a boy. And the next sentence Priamus servum vocat. Priam calls a slave. So priam is the object, vocat is the verb, servum is the object. And then priamus, puerum servo dat. So priamus is the subject, priam. The main verb is dat, that means gives. 
the object's puerum, the boy, and then servo is the dative singular of servus, so it means to the slave. And then we get some speech here, puerum gladio neca, inquit. So inquit, he says, and the verb is neca, which is a, what's called an imperative form, so it's a command. He says, kill, and the object is puerum, so kill the boy with a sword, gladio. So gladio is from gladius, meaning a sword, but it has the ending o because it's in the ablative case, with a sword. Then in the next sentence, servus puerum ad montem portat, sed puerum non necat. So the slave, servus, carries the boy, portat puerum, to a mountain, ad montem. So ad plus accusative, and then montem is the accusative of the noun that means mountain. But, that said, he does not kill, non necat, the boy, puerum. And we know that it's not the boy doesn't kill because puerum has an accusative ending. So puerum must be the object. He does not kill the boy. And then we have puerum relinquit. He abandons the boy. Relinquo, uh, relinquere is to leave someone behind or abandon them. And then puerum is, again, in the accusative case, an object. So he abandons the boy. Sed ursa puerum nunc invenit, but a bear, an ursa is a bear, uh, now finds nunc invenit, so nunc means now, and invenio, invenire, is to find. So a bear now finds the boy, puerum is the object. Ursa puerum amat et curat, the bear loves the boy, amat puerum, and... Um, looks after him. So curare is to look after. Or you could say the bear loves and looks after the boy. Then in the next sentence, servus ad montem reddit. The slave uh, returns uh, to the mountain, ad montem. And then puerum invenit. He finds the boy. And again, we know that the boy is the object because of the accusative ending, puerum. And then we get some more speech. Puer, clamat, vivit. So puer means the boy, and vivit means is alive, or lives. So the boy lives, he shouts. And then he also says, puer donum deorum est. The boy, so puer is the subject, the verb is 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 est. Donum is a second declension neuter noun like bellum, which means a gift, as in the English word donate or donation. And then deorum is the genitive plural of deus, so it means of the gods. So the sentence means the boy is a gift of the gods. And then in the next sentence, Servus puerum ad villam in pera portat. Uh, the slave is the subject. The verb is portat, carries. The object is puerum, the boy. Then ad villam, ad plus accusative means towards, so towards the villa or the house. In pera. Now, this is not uh, pera, the fruit, because that's pirum in Latin. Uh, in Latin, pera is a backpack. So the slave carries the boy to the house in a backpack. The slave, uh, so then we have this, this phrase here, servos puerum inquit impera porto. So the slave says, servos inquit, I am carrying porto, the boy, puerum, in a backpack, or in my backpack, impera. So here, pera has the long a at the end, because it's in the ablative case. And that's because it's coming after the word in. In plus ablative meaning in. And you know that, uh, that the slave is the subject, or I am the subject, because of the ending of porto. So porto means I carry. So you don't need to look for another noun to be the subject. The subject is contained within the verb porto. And then the second half of that sentence, 
huerum paridem voco. So voco means I call, and puerum is the boy, and then paridem is the accusative, because it's agreeing with puerum, um, of the name Paris. So I call the boy Paris, or I name the boy Paris. Uh, and then the last sentence here, servus paridem nunc curat. So the slave, now, that's nunc, curat, looks after, and then the object is paridem, Paris.